Hi Year 7, welcome to Lesson 6 of Ecosystems. For our starter here, for each sentence, I want you to decide if it is describing aerobic or anaerobic respiration. So pause the video whilst you answer those six questions. Question 1 then, what uses oxygen to break down glucose? is aerobic respiration. The type of respiration that produces lactic acid is anaerobic respiration. The type that releases the most energy is aerobic respiration. And the equation glucose plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide plus water is also aerobic respiration. The equation glucose converted to lactic acid is anaerobic respiration and finally the type of respiration used in shorter bursts when oxygen is lacking is anaerobic respiration. The title of this lesson is fermentation and in this lesson we're going to look at defining fermentation, listing examples of how fermentation is used and justify the use of fermentation in the manufacturing of food products. Now to understand fermentation, we have to have a recap of what anaerobic respiration means. And we looked at this in our last lesson. So as a reminder, this is a type of respiration that does not use oxygen. Remember, respiration is a process of releasing energy by breaking down food substances like glucose. You can see we've got the word equation at the top there. Glucose produces then lactic acid. And both plants and animals can respire anaerobically. This takes us to today's keyword, which is fermentation. Now this is also a type of anaerobic respiration. And it's the same breakdown of food substances like glucose. But what's, what we often refer to fermentation is the anaerobic respiration performed by plants, yeast and other microorganisms. The origin of fermentation comes from a Latin word fermentum which meant yeast. So anaerobic respiration and fermentation can describe the same process about how we release energy from food substances like glucose without using oxygen. However we can split fermentation into two parts We've got lactate fermentation, which is what produces lactic acid. And this is what we commonly associate as anaerobic respiration that humans and other animals can perform. But we've also got alcoholic fermentation. And this is fermentation that plants, yeast and other microorganisms can use as well that produces different products. And this is what fermentation is more commonly associated with. So if you focus on alcoholic fermentation, this is a type of anaerobic respiration that does not require oxygen. However, it's different from lactate fermentation or typical anaerobic respiration that we associate with humans because the products and therefore word equation is different. So the word equation is this. Glucose is converted to ethanol plus carbon dioxide. And this makes this reaction really useful in food manufacturing because these two products can be used in a whole host of food and drinks. Ethanol is a type of alcohol which is often used in the production of beer and wine. So there's our equation again. It can be used to produce food substances like beer, wine, as well as bread. Now, if you look at the equation, have a think. How do you think that equation can help contribute to baking bread? Well, the answer is, when yeast respires using alcoholic fermentation, that release of carbon dioxide helps bread rise. Now, you may ask what happens to the ethanol. Well, that's burnt off in the cooking of the bread. Now, I'm sure we've got a glass of wine there next to it. 
you'll know that ethanol is an alcohol and this is what contributes to alcoholic beverages as well so that will make wine alcoholic the lactate fermentation can also have its uses in food manufacturing. Some types of bacteria that use fermentation or anaerobic respiration, when we think of glucose being broken down into lactic acid, they can be used to produce yogurt. Bacteria will break down the sugar or lactose in milk to produce lactic acid. This can make the yogurt more acidic, gives it a distinct taste, and it can also make the yogurt thicker. It's more noticeable in plain yogurts than Greek yogurts. This process can also be used to make cheese. This image here illustrates some different ways in which anaerobic respiration or fermentation can be used to produce different food products. Now at the top, We've got the products from the type of lactate fermentation or alcoholic fermentation and it tells you what food type they can be used to produce. So cheese, yoghurt, soy sauce are produced with the help of lactate fermentation. Beer and wine and bread are produced with the help of alcoholic fermentation. If you want to know more about microorganisms in your food and how fermentation plays a role in that, search YouTube for this TED Ed video called Microorganisms in Your Food. So we're going to finish by looking at anaerobic respiration in plants and plant cells. Now plants can respire aerobically as well as anaerobically and the plants that respire anaerobically are the ones that often grow in marshes or bogs and swamps, areas where soil and particularly the roots are going to be waterlogged or covered in water. The root cells then have adapted to be able to respire anaerobically so they can release energy from the glucose due to that lack of oxygen. Quiz time. Fermentation is a type of, is it anaerobic respiration, aerobic respiration, or combustion? Pause the video, most your answer. The answer is anaerobic respiration. Next question, what is the equation for alcoholic fermentation? Is it glucose plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide plus water? Is it glucose producing lactic acid or glucose producing ethanol plus carbon dioxide? Pause the video whilst you answer. The answer is glucose producing ethanol plus carbon dioxide. Which product from alcoholic fermentation helps bread rise? Is it carbon dioxide, ethanol or lactic acid? The answer is carbon dioxide. This takes us to our apply to demonstrate exam style questions and there is two that I'd like you to do. So once again, if you're using paper, pause the video so you can complete the question. If not, you can look for the Word document that will be attached to your assignment or the document that is in your notebook where you can also complete the questions there. So the first question, some yeast was added to some glucose solution in a test tube. A balloon was attached tightly around the mouth of the test tube, which was kept at room temperature. A gas was produced, which caused the balloon to inflate. The diagram showed the apparatus at the beginning of the experiment and 15 minutes later. You have to name the process which caused the gas to be given off. What was the gas that was produced? Write a word equation for this reaction. And this reaction can be used to help produce some types of food. Name an example of food produced using this reaction. Pause the video whilst you complete the questions. Our second question looks at the mould penicillium, which can be grown in a fermenter. Penicillium produces the antibiotic penicillin. The graph shows changes that occurred in the fermenter during the production of penicillin. 
From that graph then, which time period was penicillin produced most quickly? Describe how the concentration of glucose in the fermenter changes between 0 and 30 hours. And what is the name of the process that uses glucose? Pause the video once you answer the questions. So here are the answers to our apply to demonstrate exam questions. In question 1, the process which caused that gas to be given off was either anaerobic respiration or you can accept fermentation. And it's only those two answers because we're talking about yeast. And the gas that was produced was carbon dioxide. The word equation was glucose producing ethanol plus carbon dioxide. And finally, some examples where this reaction can be used was bread, beer, wine or alcohol. Because these all use alcoholic fermentation. For question two, penicillin was produced most quickly between 40 and 60 hours. The concentration of glucose decreases. And then the name of the process that uses glucose was respiration. To finish, here are our core questions that can be used to test yourself and your understanding of fermentation. So again, pause the video and see if you can answer these questions. So here are the answers. And if you got that, those right, well done, because that shows you have a clear understanding of fermentation. And last thing, remember to submit your assignment and attach your work if you need to. Thank you for joining me.